The kitchen-based sharing economy is cooking up change. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. We've got that story, plus some good news about monkeys and cats. But first, our story submitted to us on Twitter using hashtag Good News Next Week. Scandal-plagued Rome is becoming a do-it-yourself city. Now, this is an Associated Press report that gets into groups of people tired of the corruption in their town actually picking up brooms, defying rats, picking up bags of trash for themselves. Romans are starting to take back their city, which for years was plundered and neglected by city hall officials and cronies so conniving that some of them are on trial right now as alleged mobsters. Now it goes through some of the things that they do as far as cleaning up graffiti and, like I said, picking up trash as well. And I think it's kind of telling. There's a bit at the very end where they talk to someone who is lived in America for quite some time. They ask them why this idea of people having a sense of civic duty is only just now catching on in Rome. The idea of fixing something up is very poorly rooted in Italy. Maybe it's because we're so used to ruins. And then they got kind of serious and said, hopefully this will inspire public opinion, not just cleaning to clean. And a lot of this and a lot of the things that we talk about on these Good News Next Week episodes in a more negative way, you could start to pick apart all these parts and say, oh, well, there's, of course, they actually have the money to run those services, all the offshore accounts that we know about and don't know about. And that's true. And we can sometimes get bogged down in some of the minutia of the forest. And it kind of just makes me think of the Bruce Lee quote about not concentrating on the finger because you're going to miss all that heavenly glory. I think what we're talking really about here are the ideas, and that's what are, as they say, is the cliche, are bulletproof. But those are the things that we're trying to kind of talk about, not only here on Good News Next Week, but of course, week after week on New World Next Week with James Corbett of Corbett Report. These ideas of decentralizing and repealing and removing your consent that don't require yelling and bullhorning in the streets. They just require, like we often joke here at home, like Lisa Simpson said, when the advertising mascots ran amok, just don't look. Our cover story this week on Good News Next Week for May 2nd, 2016. I believe this is our 17th episode of Good News Next Week, the spinoff from New World Next Week, where we try and highlight some of the ways that we are winning and solutions. And one of the best ones I've heard is the kitchen-based sharing economy. The Airbnb model may come to kitchen rentals, and this comes tellingly enough from Forbes, and we're talking about slightly rich people, not super mega rich people, and it goes to actually Charlottesville, Virginia. The sharing economy best known for spawning Airbnb and Uber is encroaching into the world's kitchens. Various services that bring chefs into the private kitchens of eaters, eaters into the private kitchens of chefs, or match large groups together for shared meals. This budding industry may soon add a new wrinkle kitchen rental space for food entrepreneurs. One service defined as the Airbnb for kitchens is being proposed by an extremely small startup company called the Kitchen Network. And it gets into basically the people who started this, Ali Hill, Susan Weiner, and Ian Pascarelli, who have this idea of within Charlottesville. One of their companies, Orange Dot Baking Company, there were projects that sh- that were too big for her home kitchen where she was running her business out of. So they talked to other local food entrepreneurs who have the same problem of space, essentially. Meanwhile, there's a lot of unused large kitchen space in homes, churches, and various organizations throughout Charlottesville. If there was an Airbnb-style network to link these two parties, it would put money in the pockets of the kitchen owners while providing cheap space for those who need it. Again, this is one of those fascinating, I can't believe we're surprised about sharing. It's kind of silly, and I think we often joke here on Good News next week about a lot of this being about rediscovering things that were quite literally occulted from us long ago, and now we come back to them and say, hey, did you know that food can be medicine? Our third and final story this week on Good News Next Week comes from our buddy at Eric Moshe. Young gorillas seen dismantling poachers traps for the very first time. And it gets into Rwanda's Volcanoes National Park, where for the first time researchers spotted something. Two four-year-old gorillas, a boy and a girl, working together to dismantle traps in the area. They had essentially seen other animals get caught by local bush meat hunters trying to catch antelopes and other animals, but sometimes monkeys get caught and they don't really care and they just let them hang in there and die. 
the gorillas saw this, realized how dangerous they were, and were seen essentially breaking the traps and going and looking for other traps. A lot of these folks, again, talking from National Geographic and I believe, uh, was it? It's the uh, Diane Fossey, of course, and that's what the, you know, the Sigourney Weaver Gorillas in the Mist film is about and poaching. But the idea of animals undoing the traps of poachers is kind of a fun one and kind of an exciting one. And then in some ways we can laugh and say, oh, my God, it's kind of scary. The animal uprising is here, but not quite yet. We can see that sometimes the animals will sleep in the background, fortunately, like our good little Frankie the Cat is on this episode of new, of Good News next week as we get to some of our last bits of headlines submitted by users on Twitter using hashtag Good News next week. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can always reach out to me, james at mediamonarchy.com. So we had good news about monkeys and now some good news about cats. Cats at Japan's cat cafes now allowed to stay up until 10 p.m. So their bedtime got extended a little bit. Meanwhile, more cat news abused circus lines to be flown to their new home in South Africa. I believe they are already there, fortunately, and chowing down for the rest of their days. An idea we discussed a few weeks ago here on Good News Next Week. It was our cover story about the community fridge in India. Now this idea has hit the UK as well as a community sharing fridge operation is going on in Somerset. So again, what we're talking about, these sort of these ideas that are contagious, and you can see it playing out right now. My buddy Brock West noted right here in Oregon, we are set to approve the first recreational marijuana licenses. Now, what that gets into is essentially, yes, marijuana is legal here, but the only places that sell it recreationally were already places that were doing it medicinally. What's going to happen here in January 2017 is that it'll basically be like bars. You don't have to also be a doctor's office as well. So it'll be straight up recreational and they're doling out the licenses for that now as they are as well in Hawaii. And our buddy at Ray Vahey noted eight new medical marijuana dispensaries are going to open up in Hawaii. Woody Harrelson's is not one of them. Mike, my buddy in Philly at AfixJS, notes a couple of good news bits. U.S. unanimously passed bill requiring warrants for emails. Imagine that. And again, Brock West notes Bill Binney, of course, spying whistleblower. You can hear interviews with him on Corbett Report. Notes that the NSA is so overwhelmed with data, it is no longer even effective. And one last one from our buddy at Brock West. Peruvian farmer wins monumental battle against U.S. mining giant. And one will congratulate Brock on his awesome new Twitter avatar, as I know he's been enjoying himself in Japan recently. But we talked about this story, which you can read in full from Amanda Froelich, posted to Activist Post. We actually went over this story in a little bit greater detail on the April 27th episode of Your Morning Monarchy. I do a morning talk show every morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time, that you can listen to live via mediamonarchy.com slash listen or later where you get all of the shows mediamonarchy.com slash feed so we talked about that story and another story researchers accidentally make batteries last 400 times longer we mentioned that the day before that on april 26 2016 on the morning monarchy so again we are covering a lot of stories here in the media monarchy kingdom mostly thanks to the crowd sharing, the sharing economy, if you will. Our last good news note here on this Good News Next Week episode, playing music to babies helps brain development. And again, this probably is something that adds to the stack of research that already says playing music for your child is a good thing. Now, the different part about this story is that it's almost kind of like a drum circle. These are the parents and their kids playing drums and playing music together in a room during sessions. They did the same sort of play sessions with other kids, but there was no music. Where there is music, there is brain development. Again, we get the good news stories from you via Twitter, hashtag good news next week, and we appreciate all of your support at mediamonarchy.com slash support. We are listener-supported, non-commercial alternative media, and we've been doing it since 2005. This is Good News Next Week for May 2nd, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com, reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. <laughs>